everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today we're going to use that bright 6x6 six six paper stack to create a beautiful butterfly box. Let's get started. I'm going to be using one of the 6x6 six six papers from the bright paper stack and I'm going to be scoring it at 3 and 1 quarter and 2.75 inches. I'm using one of our retired scoreboards but if you don't have one of these you could use a scoring blade on your paper cutter. Now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to score it at 4 and a half and 1 and a half inches. All right, so once those score lines are down, we're going to go ahead and grab a Cricut craft knife and make our cut lines. I'm going to cut at the one and a half inch line down to 2.75. I'm going to lift up my knife and cut from 3.25 down to six. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the four and a half inch mark. Now go ahead and ignore that pesky fly that seems to keep flying on the screen. I'm hoping to get rid of him soon. Now that the box base has all of the score lines and cut lines, we can burnish all of those folds. Here I just have a bone folder and I'm folding everything in, making sure the creases are nice and crisp, and then I'll start to adhere the box together. Before I add adhesive, let me show you how this box gets assembled. These two side tabs will fold in and they will adhere to the inside of the box on those bigger panels. The box measures three inches by one half inch, so it will hold a post-it note pad perfectly. I'm not adding too much weight to this box, so I can use a tape runner adhesive to adhere it all together. I've just added the adhesive on those two side panels. I'm gonna fold them over, matching up the corners and gluing the tabs to the inside of the front and back panels. Now I'm just going to grab my bone folder here and make sure those panels are nice and flat against the inside and the box is all ready to start decorating. Before we continue with the project, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Let's go ahead and keep going with the project. I'm going to start by creating a long tag to stick out in the back of the box. This serves as a place where I can put a gift card or a little note and it also adds a little bit of sturdiness to the box. I'm cutting down a piece of white daisy cardstock to three inches and then I'm going to use those border tab thin cuts to create a nice decorative little tab at the top. Off camera, I've cut that tab and now I'm going to decorate this tag with the polka dot paper from that 6x6 six six bright paper stack. I have trimmed down that tag just a little bit to 6 inches in length and now I'm going to adhere that polka dot paper down to the front. After trimming off the excess paper, I can slide this tag right down into the box. Like I said, this would be the perfect place to adhere a gift card or to write a sentiment on the back. Now it's time to start decorating the box. I've grabbed some more of the 6x6 six six paper, which I've cut down to one half of an inch, and it's going to go across the top of the box. This is a leftover butterfly from a project I made a while back. I'll go ahead and stick that link up above in case you want to see how I made that embossed butterfly. I also have two tags that were also cut from those bright paper stacks, and I have this little acetate circle. The Creativity in Motion bundle comes with some acetate to help you see those motion stamps. And there were little bits and pieces left over, so I decided to cut half a circle and stick it here against the side of the tags. I've also cut a little circle out of vellum onto which I plan on stamping a sentiment using this butterfly stamp set that also comes in the Creativity in Motion bundle. We're going to be heat embossing the vellum today, so let's go ahead and get started with that process. I always start the embossing process by using the anti-static pouch on the paper or vellum that I'm going to be heat embossing. This prevents any excess powder from sticking onto my project. I've grabbed some black pigment ink and I'm going to stamp that sentiment right down onto the center of the vellum circle. After the image has been stamped, I'm going to sprinkle it with some clear embossing powder, tap off the excess, and then heat it with a heat tool. Now when you're heating up vellum, you want to stay a little bit further away than you do cardstock. This prevents any of that vellum from curling. 
You're also going to want to pay special attention that you don't overheat the vellum because that will also cause it to curl. Now that I have all of my elements ready, I'm going to start adhering everything down onto the box. This half inch teal strip is going to go across the top and I'm going to adhere a matching piece on the back of the box. The tags are going to be popped up using some thin and thick foam tape. I'm going to start by placing that navy striped tag over on the left side of the box. Before I add the polka dot tag, I want to create a decorative bow for the top of it. I've grabbed some white and gold ribbon and I'm just tying a little tiny bow. Once I have it all formed and shaped, I'm going to set this bow aside so I can add a decorative knot to the other tag. Here I'm just tying white twine around the top of the tag. I'm going to trim the ends and then use my scissors to fray that twine. Now I can go ahead and add that polka dot tag using some 3D foam tape. And then I'm going to adhere the acetate circle in place using liquid glass. I found that this was the best adhesive for the acetate. Not only does it hold it in place, but it also dries clear so it doesn't show through the acetate. Now I can glue that little decorative bow in place and add my sentiment to the front of the box. Now at this point in the project, I faced a bit of a dilemma. I really liked the look of that vellum circle, but as I tried to figure out where to place it on the box, I realized that I couldn't see the sentiment anywhere. I even tried to trim it down a little bit and it still didn't work. So I decided to go ahead and just grab some white daisy cardstock. I stamped another sentiment, cut some little chevrons in the ends, and then I added this onto the front of the box using some 3D foam tape. I think I like the look of this one much better than the vellum and it stands out a lot more. This little black butterfly matches the box so well. It is left over from a scrapbooking project I made earlier. These stamps are designed to work with your creativity in motion animation sheets, but you could use any one of these images as is on this little box. I think they look beautiful without the animation sheets. I've decided to add a little bit of a black element there on the left. I have a black butterfly, I have the black stripes, and I needed just something to form that visual triangle. And one single little starburst worked perfectly. At this point in the project, you can choose to decorate or add an embellishment to this tag. You could even adhere it down inside the box to hold it in place. Like I said, I plan on adding a little note or a gift card to the front of it, so I want it to be able to slide in and out of the box. And now our little beautiful butterfly box is all ready to go. You just need to stick a little post-it notepad inside, maybe a fun little decorative pen. You could even add a special note or a gift card onto this tag. I also plan on writing some sentiments on the back. It's really simple to do and fun to give. Now for those of you who might have friends who like little beauty items instead of notepads, you could also add some lip gloss in here or some chapstick or even a little nail file. Just some fun little things could fit inside this box. You could even stick a chocolate bar inside here along with a gift tag or some fun little coffee packets. There's all kinds of things that you can place inside this three by three box and give it as a gift to someone special. I want to thank you for joining me today as we created this beautiful butterfly box. I hope that you are inspired to use those six by six papers to create a box of your own and learned a few new ways to create with those creativity in motion products. Each week I add new tutorials to my blog and YouTube channel. If you wish to see more in the future, go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification icon. If you'd like to see more of my projects that I've made in the past, you can click that collection icon above. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.